Hey everyone, it's Brown Coat Nerd. Today I've got another review for you on a Zastava pistol. Today we're looking at the M57. This is basically Yugoslavia's take on the Russian Tokarev. Uh, that was designed originally designed with the TT30 in 1930. They did a few modifications to that model. Um, came out with the TT33, and that served the Soviet Union up until 1954 when it was replaced by the Makarov that began production in 1952. Basically what the Tokarev is, it's based off the Browning uh, short recoil system. It's a single action, um, it's pretty basic, and of course the Russians uh, do their usually, usual twist and cut corners and designed it in a way that could be produced quicker and cheaper. Um, a bunch of countries adopted the uh, Tokarev as many countries do with different Russian firearms. Um, so China, Hungary, North Korea, Pakistan, Poland, Romania, Vietnam, and Yugoslavia or Serbia, depending on what year it was made, all produced a variation of the Tokarev. One of the most common ones you see out there will be the Yugoslavian slash Serbian models. Um, there's just a bunch of these in the surplus market as well as the M57A, which is basically a civilian-made version um, of this gun. So you'll see a lot of that, and it tends to get kind of marked as surplus, even though it's technically not, because it was made for the civilian market, and you can buy those brand new. Um, and as far as I know, no police or military ever used the uh, A model. Uh, but other than that, uh, the most common one you'll see is going to be the Romanian one, which is a pretty accurate reproduction of the Russian models. Um, for a while, those kind of dried up, but they've been coming back into the country, which is nice to see. Um, so that's kind of your your span on the Tokarevs there. You'll still see some Russian ones come in. Um, the Polish ones have kind of dried up. Well, really, the Russian ones have too. You're going to have to buy all of those, you know, um, off the private market rather than any of the bulk uh, surplus shops. Uh, but moving along, this particular model here, the uh, M57, was uh, designed in 1957 and served as the sidearm for Yugoslavia up until 1992. Um, other models that were kind of based off this, you have the M70, uh, excuse me, the M70A, not to be confused with the just M70, which is what this is here. It's like a little baby infant Tokarev chambered in 32 ACP. But the M70A was basically this gun here. It was this size. Um, but it was chambered in 9mm or 9 Parabellum. And then you also have the M57A. And like I said earlier, that was the one produced for the civilian market, pretty much produced for exportation to the U.S. And the difference on that gun was it was chambered in 7.62 by 25 like the original one is, but it had a slide-mounted safety, much like on the M88 here. I mean, it was almost the exact same design. Now, from what I've seen, I don't really like the way they marked the M57As. Uh, it has a uh, an, like an F on the frame up here for fire and an S down on the, uh, or excuse me, an F on the slide up here for fire and an S on the frame for safe. And I mean, they're not really painted. They're just kind of etched in it. I think it just looks cheap and crappy. And um, I wish they just would have gone with a little indention and red dot like they did on the M88. I think you can even see a little indention on the M57s like they were going to, but decided against it at the last minute. Um, but the design of the safety lever, I mean, it looks just like that. It might even be that exact same piece. So that's what the M57A is. Um, and also on the M57A, it does have a hammer block. Um, I know a lot of people talk about carrying these. I mean, they are nice. They're very thin. Um, these full size ones are kind of a little big, um, uh, but a lot of people talk about that and, uh, the M57A with the, uh, slide safety here does have a hammer block. So that's kind of, you know, a little extra added benefit, um, if you should drop it or something, give you a little more safety there. Um, and also on that M57A, they did away with the lanyard loops, which, you know, makes sense. Um, I mean, these are kind of silly to begin with, really. Uh, but one of the weird things that um, they didn't fix was the grips. So you can see these grips, they have like a little cutout for the lanyard. So the uh, the M57As, um, that piece is gone, but they didn't make the grip 
come all the way down like on the other side. Um, and if I owned one of those, that would drive me absolutely nuts. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of aftermarket ones that fill that in for you. Um, there has to be. <laughs> and if there's not, there's a hell of a market for that. Now, getting back to the uh, surplus one we have here, some of the differences um, are the grips. This is the later style grip. The earlier ones, it would have the initials FNRJ on the grips. And then in 1963, they changed the name to the Socialist, what was it? Uh, Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Um, and then the initials changed to SFRJ, as you see on here. Another thing you can tell is the crest here, the number of torches. And as you can see, it is not the easiest thing to count the number. And some people say count the flames, count the torches at the bottom. And on this one, it would appear that there are uh, five, whoops, sorry, five flames, but six actual little torches here. And I was looking online and there's kind of several different variations um, of that. So uh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> and if you're wondering about production year, uh, once again, I was looking online, and I got some mixed results, although for the most part, everyone agreed to one kind of table um, of the production. This one's C, and uh, this one was made 1960-something. I forgot to write that down, apparently. Um, but, you know, if you got one of those, look online. But in really, the one article, actually, I think it was just the one spot that, that was saying that uh, they didn't match up with what everyone else was saying. It was weird because it's actually a Serbian um, article. So, uh, yeah, I figured they would have it right, but it doesn't look like they did. So pretty much what you're going to see online, you know, check a couple different places. They match up. I think that's the chart. That's good. Go with that. Um, so let's see here. A couple footnotes. Um, in 2005, Sir v I'm going to butcher this. So um, Zastava's full name... See a Servina Zastava. In 2005, they changed that name to Zastava or, or something. Basically, Zastava Arms. Um, so you'll see the uh, the newer Zastava O word, meaning arms, on the slide of the newer ones. That's also something you can kind of tell, um, you know, when it was made. And this one, I'm looking on here, and I don't believe it actually says. Zestava anywhere. We just have the 7.62 millimeter M57 telling us our caliber and model. And then we just have the uh, serial numbers and model right there too. Um, whereas the other ones, you know, the M88, it's got Zestava there on the slide. And the M70 also has the Stava. So what makes this particular one special and made me very excited to get it. I had seen these a while back and I, mean, I even mentioned it, mentioned it in one of my videos um, on the Serbian uh, Tokarevs, kind of talking about how, well, you know, I need an M57 now. Well, here you go. Um, a batch had come into Classic, and I really wanted one from that. Um, and they had sold out of those. And then, you know, there were several M57s available that I could have purchased from different companies. But there is a specific setup that I was looking for. And a while ago, Classic got another batch of those in. And it made me really happy. The last I checked, Classic still has them. Um, so what's so special about this one? Well, first, the slow, subtle basic one. Import marks. By God, do they suck. They usually butcher it. Sometimes companies are nice and are aware of it. And, you know, will make really nice discreet ones. Um, but typically what you'll see on the Tukrevs is a billboard on the slide like this one here. I mean, it just takes away from the beauty. I've complained about it many times before. As you notice, no giant billboard on that. I mean, isn't that just lovely and respectful? What we do have... Are you holding it the right way up? Nope. There's a very subtle import mark on the bottom of the trigger guard. And that 
ladies and gentlemen, is how you do a proper import mark. I mean, it's still kind of the ugly, like, little dots. To, uh, I don't care. You know, that is, like, the perfect spot. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, so that was a huge appealing thing to me about this particular batch. But the most one, the, the weird American import laws on handguns. If a handgun is going to be imported into the U.S., it has to have a manual safety. So the safety that's on this Polish one here, it's very much like the style of safeties you'll see on most of the Romanian ones, was added simply so it could be imported into the U.S. Now, of course, once that, that law is just for the importation. So once that gun's been imported into the U.S., pff, who cares if that safety's on there? It doesn't matter. It's simply for the importation. But what really sucks is, one, that's ugly. You know, it's plastic. It just doesn't match with the gun. This one was kind of nicely done. They like, kind of punched in the metal there and painted it in a little red spot. You know, they kind of try to make it look nice. But, I mean, they had to shave into the grip here. Just to have that safety. That's ridiculous. This slide release it shouldn't have a circular notch in This is how it should look. But they had to cut into it. And then, of course, obviously, they had to cut a hole into the frame. And then over here, even the takedown lever has been cut into. I mean, they've butchered it. And in case you're wondering, yes, I have the other grip panel for this. I had taken this one off. I'm um, getting ready to do a, another video you will see later this month. Um, but so basically, even if you take this out now, your takedown lever is kind of a little bit butchered, which I'm sure that's super cheap to find online. But you're going to have a hole in your frame over here. Got a hole in your frame here. And now your takedown lever has been milled into as well as your grip, which, of course, both of these are replaceable. But you still got that big, ugly, freaking hole in the frame. And also, these are safeties that are added after the fact. These were not added by Zestava or, you know, Kruger or Radom. I would not trust these safeties at all. Um, so it's just, get rid of them. You know, they have a half cock. That is your proper safety, not this stupid thing. I mean, in this one, it does work, you know. So, but it's just, it's ugly. I hate it. And you'll notice on this one, it does not have that. Now, a lot of the Zestavas I've seen, um, they have, a, it looks kind of nice. It's a little safety on the back of the frame. Of course, once again, they're having to cut into this uh, grip panel here a little bit. And then I believe they also cut a, a notch into the slide. And it doesn't look bad. You know, it's easily, you know, you can flip up and down easily. From what I've seen, I haven't actually handled one. And they do have some early Zestavs that were imported that have a safety much like this. Um, and this one is a factory installed safety from Zestava. But the M57s that have this little switch on there, I mean, it's not the exact same, but it looks very similar. Those were not done by Zestava, and I've heard a lot of people complain about those. Um, and so just, you know, it kind of sucks. You're, you're almost taking a gamble when you get one of those ones with the safety as to whether, you know, it's it's going to, you know, mess with the function of it. Now, the ones with the safety back here, like I said, that you see on most of the Zestavas, for the most part, people have been happy with them. Um, and even the same thing with this one. I haven't heard too many people complain about it other than it just, you know, butchering up the gun, which is sad. So how this one does not have it, it actually did when, it, when I purchased it. Someone got smart and put a Glock-style safety on it so this is the trigger that came on the gun and this basically just kind of hit they didn't it doesn't look like they added anything to the you know gun to make this work this piece would kind of just hit the frame but if you pivoted it up just pivoted it pivoted it if you moved it up just a little bit you could then pass that section of the frame that it was catching on um so that's kind of slick now, when I first got this, um, I didn't actually ever fire it with this trigger in there. I did, did some do some lineman trigger pulls with it, but just dry firing it, it just it felt very weird and inconsistent. And this is a little grainy in here, and you can see it's almost kind of sideways. But there's like a few like little catching points here. Now, you know, if someone wanted to, they could you know buff that up, polish it, or maybe just spray some CLP in there or something that might help it out quite a bit, make it feel a little bit better. But still, 
you know, this is an original and this is such an easy swap. And once again, it's perfectly legal to do once it's in the country. This is simply for importation. So um, I got another trigger. Uh, this particular one, I believe, was advertised as being Polish, um, which is actually the same on this gun here. And one thing I will point out, this has little grooves into the trigger. I have no clue as to whether the original M57 triggers did. This one is smooth, but it looks like at one point it did have those grooves. It was just smoothed out for whatever weird reason. So maybe it is a Polish trigger. Um, at the time, I could not find any M57 like original triggers. Um, I'm not the only one that thought of this. There's other videos out there. This isn't even the first video on the topic. So they've kind of dried up and disappeared. So I went ahead and ordered that trigger. Um, since then, uh, Classic actually got some, and I've ordered one of those, and that is in transit. Once again, you know, at first I was like, ah, I don't need to mess with ordering it, but it was like, I am so close to having an original gun. Um, how can I not just go ahead and go the extra mile, even though this is set up properly? Um, and the reason the grip panel is off the Polish one is I will be doing a video on the trigger swap. It's super easy. Once again, it's not even the first video on the uh, topic out there, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do one for you guys. Um, and one of the weird things, too, I found out researching this gun, um, in that Serbian article, actually, uh, that had the uh, serial date coding thing all wrong, they had a picture of a M57 with a chain from the lanyard loop to the lanyard loop on the bottom of the magazine. And in the picture, it looks like one of those kind of dog tag style chains with the, the little balls on it. I thought that was really weird. I've always thought it was weird that these had a lanyard loop on the mag. And I didn't know, you know, I pictured that, you know, they attached like one or the other. It just didn't really make any sense to me. And I'd never seen a picture that it was simply attaching the two of these. So I think they'd have the chain go to here and then still attach their, you know, your standard lanyard attachment that goes around your, you know, your torso or it's connected to your holster or belt or whatever. Um, cause that's a bigger loop. So you can, you know, you can connect more than one things. So I got on some, uh, pages for these, um, different groups and started asking around if anyone had ever seen one of these. Cause I'm like, now I have to have one of those chains. And for the most part, everyone, was just kind of like, I had never seen a setup like this, you know, kind of in the same shoes I was. Um, but then there was, uh, in one of the groups, um, a gentleman, I believe he was from Serbia, um, he piped in, he was like, no, actually, this is a very common setup you see in Yugoslavia. Even, you know, shared a picture of his grandfather's um, M57. Now, on that one, it had a different chain. It was more kind of like a chain wallet style um, chain. And he did comment that the chain that I had shared in the picture with the little dog tag style change chain was pretty unusual. And he had never seen that style. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat. And I've tried looking around trying to find a specific chain that was for that purpose um i don't think i'm gonna find one and for all i know they may you know there might not be a specific chain for it they might just rig it up um you know however so i might be making a trip to home depot i'm kind of hesitant though i feel like if i do that it'll be cool and unique but everyone's gonna look at it and be like why are you trying to make your toker rev look like billy idol so i might not bother with that so some of the differences between the Serbian Tokarev and your standard Tokarev, you know, the Russian ones, the Romanian ones, the Polish ones, you know, for the most part, the Tokarevs are all the same. I do believe some of the Pakistan ones are a little different. The North Korean one is different. Um, I'm not sure how different the Chinese and the Vietnamese one are, but I've got a Polish one here, and this is pretty much dead-on copy of a Russian one. It's even got the original early style uh, slide serrations uh, that the early Russian Tokarevs did. So the biggest difference is gonna be your grip size. It has a longer grip on it. Eh, there we go, a little better comparison. Um, you know, in holding the Polish Tokarev, I never really felt like it had a short grip. I've got kind of a crooked pinky, so I take up a little more real estate. But then when I held the M57, I was just like, ooh, that, okay, no, that's perfect, you know. And just holding this gun compared to the Polish one, and, you know, these Polish ones are considered to be pretty nice. They're made by Radom. But just holding this, it just, it, I mean, it feels beefier. And, yeah, the, the grip's a little bit longer. But other than that, there's, you know, really no added mass or anything. 
I mean, it feels like a solid gun. Um, because of that, the magazines obviously are a little bit longer. And thus hold one more round. So we've got like a little baby extendo. Now some people I will, some of the videos I see that people do, they're saying these mags are not interchangeable at all. For the most part, it looks like everyone's getting it right though. And as I'm sure you can figure out just from looking at this, yes, the Yugoslavian M57 mag will work in your standard Tokarev. Gives you a little bit of an extension. So if you want that longer grip, there you go. Although I will say, this uh, base plate here kind of sticks out because it has that gap. And it does kind of dig into your palm of your hand there. So something to consider, seriously consider if you're thinking about getting one of these mags just for the longer grip or the extra round. Now vice versa, obviously, this mag, while it does fit in just fine, it's not locking. It's not going to do you no good. It's just a, it's just a plug. Um, so just clarify like that and like I said most videos people have got it right But I've seen several videos of people saying they're just completely different mags and they're not Interchangeable at all and they are somewhat um, So going back to the differences uh, The front sights on your standard Tokarev, which is on my left here um, They're milled into the slide whereas on the M57. It's actually adjustable for windage and also, as you can see here, it's got some slide serrations on the M57. You know, of course, the idea on that's to help cut down on glare. How much that really helps, I don't know. And of course, the uh, the standard one is completely smooth here, other than the roll marks. And the slide serrations on the uh, M57 only go um, halfway down the slide, just like on the M88. Um, of course, we have the uh, Yugoslavian crest there. Um, one thing I will say too about these crest, this particular one I got off of Classic Firearms. Sorry, I'm going to get off subject for just a second. Um, they have a non-CNR skew um, and a CNR skew. The CNR skew I think is like 10 or 15 bucks more. And really the, the only reason I could see someone wanting to buy one of those is with that you're guaranteed to have a Yugoslavian crest. On the non-CNR ones, um, some of those do not have the crest. I ordered this, this was a good condition, non-CNR, and as soon as I ordered it, I was like, why did I do that? Why did I not just spend the extra 10 bucks? I'm only gonna get one of these. Why not just spend the extra 10, 15 bucks, guarantee the crest? I felt like an idiot. But, as you can see, I got lucky and it did have a crest, so I'm happy. Um, so, uh, if you want to buy one of these and get on the Classic and you see that just, be aware, if you're really wanting a crest, you know, get the non-CNR or um, get the, uh, or excuse me, get the CNR one if you really want the crest. Um, or you could even pick like hand select maybe on the non-CNR and put in the comments, you know, please get me one with a crest. When I've ordered things from Classic before and I've chosen the hand select, um, there at least used to be a comment section and I never put any huge requests in there, but any requests I did put in there, they always fall through. Like on the uh, SKS S41 with the ported grenade launcher, I paid hand select, I got it. On the M88, I paid um, hand select, I asked for wood grips, and I got it. So, um, and that's just for classic, like I said. I'm, I'm sure any other of the uh, major uh, sellers of surplus would do the same. So, uh, getting back to the differences. We're doing the slide. The rear sights are pretty much the same. Nothing really different there. Um, and obviously the safety, that's that's not real. The uh, mag release button on all the standard ones, it's a pretty small magazine release button. And it's, you know, just kind of a little bump. It's raised in the center. It goes down a little bit on the edges. And it is not, I mean, you got to really just push in all the way to get that mag. It's not the best button. Zestava fixed that, they put a bigger button, and now it's kind of concave. I mean, and it feels nice. The mag did release, you just can't tell, because like all Zestavas, it's got one of those stupid magazine disconnect safeties where you take the magazine out, you can't fire the gun. Um, so that's the reason that uh, 
magazine doesn't pop out like it does on the Polish one. The Polish one does not have that. The standard Tokarevs did not have that magazine disconnect. Safety, that's simply as a Stava thing. Um, another thing that is different that I noticed, I haven't really seen anyone mention this, not that I stumbled on anything great here. Um, the ejection port is quite a bit bigger on the uh, Zestava M57. I'm guessing just, you know, make sure you don't have any stove pipes or anything. Um, but as you can see, it comes over the top of that sub slide substantially more than your standard Tokarev. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Also, you'll see that there's a pin on the top of the slide there. I haven't gotten down to completely breaking down this slide. Um, and only the Yugoslavian ones I've seen with that pin, all the standard ones do not. So clearly they changed something up a little bit on the mechanics internally there. All right. Um, so the other difference, um, would be the barrel lengths are the same. You know, the, the slides are the same length. The only difference in the uh, size, um, is the grip, which does add a little bit more weight. Um, the standard Tokarev is... 30.1 ounces, or yes, 30.1 ounces, whereas your Zestava one is 31 ounces. So it weighs just a little bit more, but not a huge difference. All right, and the trigger pull. When I had this trigger installed, like I said, I did do the lineman trigger pull. I did five of them, got an average. And with the trigger safety, I was getting an average of four pounds, four ounces. Um, and I will go ahead and say this. I've been using that Lyman trigger pull on several guns, and I feel like I'm getting really light <laughs> results. So I don't know if that one's a little off, but, um, you know, as comparison-wise, even if it is off by a couple pounds, you know, comparison-wise, there's still going to be that difference. Um, so once I put the uh, replacement trigger in there, did the average pull again, and it got a little bit lighter. It wasn't a very big difference at all, but that, that average was three pounds, 15 ounces. So, um, you know, almost four pounds. It, it lost just a few ounces. But I will say um, with this one, like the trigger pulls, like I said earlier, it just, they, they felt inconsistent. And when I did the Lyman trigger pull, I never, every once in a while, it didn't happen often, but this would like really catch up on me. And I really had to yank down on that trigger. And that happened maybe once every, I don't know, 10 pulls. I wasn't sitting there all day dry firing it, but um, it just, it, it did not feel good. I did not like the feel of this at all. So the feel alone, even though the, the trigger pull weight didn't change very much, it was a big improvement in the feel. And of course it just, it looks so much better. It doesn't have the little funky, you know, roll pin in your trigger and the little boot sticking out. So, uh, let's go on to accessories here. What we've got, this is a holster. And once again, like a lot of the Yugoslavian stuff, a little bit of oil on there. Um, these had kind of dried up and it really irritated me because um, these used to be all over. Um, so I got an eBay. There were several different colors of these that you will see. This is pretty much the standard holster. It's like the exact same design as the M70 here. This one's well worn. But I mean, the stitching here is the same. This is the same. Um, I mean, very close. Looks like we got some reinforcement stitching on here that this doesn't have. Um, but it's, it's almost the same holster. Uh, most of them are gonna be dark brown like this. You will see some that are like a really light, almost like super light tan leather. And then they've got some other ones that are kind of a yellowish blonde or mustard color. I tried to get one of the lighter ones or the yellowish colored ones. And uh, apparently I'm not the only one that thinks those look nicer. Cause like every time at the end, people just started bidding on it like crazy. And I'm like, no. Um, Cause also these were, most of the ones I was bidding on were, you know, brand new looking. Some of the used ones they had on eBay at the time were just ridiculously overpriced. Um, and so I ended up getting this for 20 bucks. No one else even bid on it, which kind of sucks because just recently classic got a bunch of these holsters in and I think they're like 10 bucks and they're used. Um, yeah, this is nicer. It's new, but you know, my Zestava, it's, it's a little worn. It's got some wear on the sharp edges. I would like a holster that, you know, looks its age. So eh, that sucks. Oh, well, whatever. Also, I will say, um, 
you know, if you're getting ready to order one of those holsters from Classic, you know, look at the timestamp that I release this video because obviously, you know, the video stays up, time goes on. But right now, the ones that Classic is offering, they have a video on YouTube of them. And it's actually a mismatch of what looks like Yugoslavian and Romanian Tokarev holsters. And any of the Tokarev holsters will work just fine. I mean, the only difference you have is this grip. You know, even on those holsters, I don't think it's really going to stick out at all. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and I I don't think it's Classic's fault. I, they probably got a crate of holsters from Serbia. You know, they were getting whatever kind of weapons they could during the whole Civil Wars. They weren't just using their weapons. They were using Romanian AKs. Um, you know, they're using all kinds. You know, you'll even see uh, Chinese SKSs um, in some of the footage. So the fact that they would use a mismatch of different holsters, I, it makes perfect sense. Um, they even, Classic even had some like canvas ones that look like some old Italian um, holsters. And I'm sure they all work for the Tokarev or, you know, but just keep that in mind. The other thing that I thought was kind of cool, and I've had this for a while, is this surplus ammunition. And this is actually from former Yugoslavia, and it was made, you know, for this gun. What's kind of neat too, and I always get a kick out of it, PPU, and of course, those guys are still around. You know, I'm sure you'll recognize these boxes. I think they changed their box design again just recently. Um, and, you know, Serbia. So I always got a kind of a kick out of that. But I got this box here. Um, it's the only box I got though, so I don't want to open it. So yeah, we'll save that for another day. I'm just kidding, come on guys. What kind of a jerk do you think I am? We're gonna experience this together. And I've got another box in the mail, so. I better not do this while looking through the camera like I was just getting ready to. I'm sure it'd make for a great video. So, I'm not sure if these are magnetic or not. I'm gonna bet they're brass case. Um, I've got some Yugoslavian, uh, oh, that box busted open. Here's the SKS ammo, and that's all brass case. Broken box. So, let's find out. Some wax paper covering it, pretty typical. And yeah, that was brass. Got a nice little seal on the primer there. I'm sure that's to keep moisture out. Um, 1977. I will assume that's production year. And, and I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and guess that top there, that NNY is PPU. So I've got a new production round PPU here. This is the stuff that PPU currently makes. You know, I'm sure the uh, the bullet weight and the powder charge, that I mean, probably different. It's kind of neat. Then I also have a Romanian surplus round here. Um, I shot these through my uh, Polish Tokarev. I was really not impressed. This is the first ammo I got for it. And um, the accuracy sucked. <laughs> and then I got some like Cellar and Bellot, Cellar and Below, whatever you call it, some PPU stuff, um, and some Red Army Standard. And all of that was substantially more accurate than this Romanian stuff, so I just kind of quit shooting it. Um, and of course, the surplus stuff too, keep in mind, guys, this stuff is corrosive. So when you use this, Clean your gun shortly thereafter. Don't let it sit for a long time or you're going to get some corrosion and rust on you. It's got the same little kind of dimpled uh, stuff going on here in the neck to seat the bullet. And we're magnet. Oh, yay. It is not magnetic. So if the nearest range to you is an indoor range like me, it's brass cased, non-magnetic, you are indoor range friendly. I'm not sure about the Romanians. Oh, yeah, the Romanian stuff is magnetic. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. The indoor range I shot these in isn't even open anymore. And back then I just was told if it was brass case, I was good to go. Wasn't even my fault. That's from the range. Like I said, they're no longer even open. So, well, there goes one. Like What was 1977 production on this ammo here? Oh, look at that. Fun mess. Oh, yeah, let's just eat it. Uh, okay, yeah, let's, I mean, let's 
get it all out. That's going to be a fun range day right there. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review of my M57 that I am very happy to get. Like I said, I mean, I've been waiting and waiting, and I almost broke down. I almost ordered one of these that had the uh, safety back here, and, man, I would be kicking myself so hard if I had, and then these came back in. So if you're thinking about getting one of these and you're really big on the history and, you know, it being as original as possible, this is a great batch to get these from. I haven't really looked around a whole bunch, um, but the only place I've seen these is Classic. I don't know if this is like an exclusive to them or what, um, but that's where I got this one. Like I said, it was a uh, good grade, non-CNR skew. It was not hand-picked. Um, I've taken it out twice now shooting. I've been very happy with it. The first time I did take it out shooting, the sights were drifted over pretty far. Not as bad as on my M88 where they're almost getting ready to fall off. Um, but I've seen quite a few videos on the M57 and people talk about how they have to drift the sights quite a bit for it to be accurate. So I'm like, I'll just leave it there, see what happens. And it did not hit paper. <laughs> it was way off. So I brought it home. And, you know, me and my buddy, we shot a couple rounds through it. Functioned just fine. So I brought it home. Uh, drifted the sights some. Took it back out with my uh, little sister-in-law for her birthday. Uh, we fired it some, and it was much more accurate. So I'm very happy with it now. And before I end this video, I am also lucky enough to have two mags. These mags are kind of hard to find. And like I said right now, everyone's kind of buying up the uh, M57s. I uh, got to thank my buddy Chuck. I forget which one he gave me, but he gave me one of these mags. Um, last time I went out shooting, I we used both of them, and they both worked flawlessly. Um, so thanks, Chuck. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you like this, please like and subscribe. Stay shiny.